Okay, the next component on our build is the uh, SD card carrier. And we don't have to do too much to this board except remove the bottom three resistors. There's four pull-up resistors on this board. The only one that's absolutely required for removal is the um, the second one from the bottom, which is on the clock line. The Arduino uses mode zero when it's accessing the SD card in SPI mode, and that mode sleeps with the clock line low, so if you leave this pull-up resistor, you end up drawing about a third of a milliamp all the time when your log is asleep, so that we don't want that. But I also take off the ones on the meso and the mozzie line, and then use the internal pull-up resistors on the Arduino to pull those lines. Now, that's not even technically required in the SD card SPI spec, but I've found that some SD cards sleep better if we uh, if we do put some pull-up, but I do that in software. So again, just like the uh, ones we removed from the Arduino board, you can usually just put the tip of your iron on the edge of the SMD resistor and then just wait for the heat to transfer and then the little component should lift. And I'll do that to the third one. Don't remove the fourth one, this fourth resistor here in the row. That one is to pull up the unused connections on the SD card. And that's actually uh, pretty important because if those connections are not pulled up, they'll draw excessive current as well. So it's just the first three on this board that I pull off. And then the next step is to bend these pins so that they are over the board itself. We're going to be tinning these and attaching wires to them and that will give us our SD card connection to the logger. So you just want these sort of bent down at 90 degrees. And uh, we'll tin them, so I'll throw them in a vise here. flux on those pins, not too much. Again, you always want to make sure you're not using too much flux. Right. So now we will just burn off that flux. If you hold this too long, the pin will soften and fall onto the board. You don't want that. You just want enough to get rid of the the flux that you've added and make sure there's a nice thin layer on the pins. Okay, so while that's waiting, now we prepare a set of wires. Alright, so uh, we just strip and tin the ends of a set of wires for those connections. Again, I usually only do about half a, half a centimeter. I'm just going to speed that up quickly here. Once you've got your wires tinned, then it's just a matter of uh, bringing the wires and attaching them to these pre-tinned pins. It's reasonably easy soldering. The trick is to hold it uh, steady so that when you're attaching the wires you aren't shaking the solder at the same time. I usually, you see my, my secondary fingers here are sort of braced on the vise itself so that it helps me deal with the shakiness. And 
And if you end up with some uh, some extra burrs, you can trim them. This, these ones are fairly clean, probably not worth cleaning up. And uh, you can also either put some tape across that later or some heat shrink on those connectors and, and just sort of protect them from tapping. Usually I just put a, a piece of tape, I usually have enough excess after the build to just cover those up so that there isn't accidental touchdowns on there. Did you ever use conformal on those? Yeah, we're going to put a, just a touch on these connectors. Uh, again, I'm going to trim them. This isn't required, but just for um, the sake of keeping everything clean. Just going to trim those flush. And then a little bit of alcohol, as usual. I didn't solder these joints, but the factory they came from certainly did, and you can't always trust that they've been cleaned worth a darn, so... Give that a little cleaning. Take the alcohol off with a, some heat or some time. I'm just in a hurry here. just on the part that might have had some solder on it. Um, it's really difficult to put conformal on the top of this, so I usually just don't bother, because if you had the conformal run into those little spring contacts, then you wouldn't be able to contact your, with your SD card, so I usually just do the bottom. And uh, only because we're in a hurry here, I'm just going to give this a little a little speed up. Alright, so normally I would give the conformal 15-20 minutes to properly degas, but at this point we add a little bit of tape to the bottom of this board. This board is going to be attached to our Arduino Pro Mini, and so I'm just going to cover the bottom of this board with some tape. a bit of excess here. It's not hard to trim it away. You just want to make sure you don't uh, accidentally cut your wires in the process. This is 3M 5 pound double sided tape. And to trim the, uh, the line off the bottom there I usually use smaller clippers. It's just easier to get in there than with larger scissors. So there's the bottom of the board covered with the double-sided tape and uh, we just happen to have some excess here so I can put a little protective a little protective layer. And that's mostly to prevent short circuits. Right? Yeah, if, if something was floating around inside your logger this would just prevent the power line and the ground line from being exposed. Not really necessary but might as well since we had that excess tape anyway. Good practice. Yeah. Okay, so that is basically the SD board ready for the assembly stage. Pretty quick. Let's move on to the RTC.